Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Stellaris with me, Alathrix, and of course, welcome to a brand new playthrough where today we are going to be beginning our journey to becoming the endgame crisis itself. After being the good guys over in the Honorbound, it's now time for me to relax and maybe be slightly less good in general. So today, what we're going to be doing is starting our run. We are currently in the brand new version, which is 3.0.1. I do have the Nemesis DLC installed, and here is the Empire I'm going to be playing as. Now, there are so, so many new things with this DLC and with the new patch, things like the new spy system. We have, of course, the actual Nemesis system itself, where we can become the ultimate end of the galaxy, and loads of other reworks, and I'll try to get into them as I play. Originally, I was going to do a full playthrough, but then I did a test run earlier, and there is way too much stuff for me to put into one video. It would be utterly dreadful. Also, I just knocked over a bottle on my desk, so n clearly, this is going to go incredibly well. So here is the Empire we are going with. We are the Latherian Infiltrators. Absolutely nothing to do with the Lathrixian people, because we're good guys, and the Latherians might be a little bit off. Plus, I'm actually naming this after the first leader it tried to give us, which is Lathir, which is one of the random names, and I just had to go with it. So we are the Latherian Infiltrators. We are a necrophage, and we are criminal heritage. It's been a long time since I've played with criminal heritage, and it just really fits the theme of this run, because I am going to be focusing a lot on my spy networks, and the criminal heritage will give us plus 20% infiltration speed for our spies, which is the main reason I've gone with it. We are then also public relations specialists, which might not seem to fit the theme of this empire, but it does because it gives you extra envoys. The extra envoys are essentially your spy masters if you choose to use them like that. But before we get more into the mechanics and everything, let's talk about the story of this empire, since I always love a good story, even if telling one isn't always my strong point, I always try. So this is a Latherian. This is a species which originally dwelled over in the Shroud, before it was summoned into the Material Plane by a very, very greedy species, a horribly vicious and just disgusting species here, which brought them here under promises of increased wealth, under promises that they can truly be alleviated of all their problems by the Latherians. This was a lie. The Latherians are a greedy, vicious, and ultimately envious species. They seek only to destroy and take everything for themselves. They're not dumb, though. They're not going to be openly hostile all the time, but they are pretty darn nasty, hence why they are repugnant and everything else. They're just not very pleasant to be around. But they are charismatic enough to be a mega corporation and everything else. They are xenophobes, they are militarists, and they are spiritualists. Now, originally I wanted to go with materialists, because I do go with spiritualists, I think, a little bit too much. But I really want to rush Unity, which this really promotes. I want the temples and everything else. But also, I want to go with the Psyker stuff, so spiritualist really is the way to go there. It's just going to make everything flow a lot more smoothly. I've already mentioned about our civics, we are criminal heritage, which allows us to put down branch offices even if we don't have a commercial pact, which is good since we can't make them if we're criminal heritage, and we are public relations specialists, giving us more diplomatic weight to manipulate the galaxy at large, and we have two extra envoys. Our species is thrifty, our natural physicists, and our intelligence, whereas our human subjects are thrifty, rapid breeders, and traditional. They are unruly and slow learners, not really learning from their mistakes. A lot of them wish to ascend and become Latherians themselves, even though, again, clearly not learning from past mistakes. That's probably not a good idea. We are going with the Necroid voice, and we are going with the new ship type, the Imperial ships. Now, I'm not 100% sure if this really fits with the theme of everything, but I do kind of love the look of them. They're all... I don't want to say steampunky, but you'll see. You'll see when you see them. I will be looking at all the ships a lot, especially in the first few episodes. We are starting off at Entropy's Promise, because that was the random name assigned, and I think it fits really, really well. So then, we're done with that. Let's set up everything else. Uh, the end game, I'm going to set to 2300. Yeah, let's go with that. Crisis type, I will keep as random. 
Actually, I might set the end game a little bit lighter because that's not really the goal of this playthrough and I'm going to be doing things very inefficiently. A lot of things have changed and I noticed I wasn't playing fantastically. So we're going to set it like that. Apparently the game now also runs a lot better. Everyone I've spoke to, from people with very bad computers to people with beasts like mine, apparently the game runs way better in the new patch. So really looking forward to that. Uh, we're going to have a huge empire then to really test that. Maximum crisis strength when it does arrive. We're, we are going to have scaling difficulty for once, because I really like scaling difficulty after playing with the AI mod, and I want to use it again. It also means we can be a little bit more aggressive in the early game. We will be setting the difficulty, though, to maximum Grand Admiral, so although they don't get the bonuses straight away, they will get it over time and become scarier and scarier and scarier. Hoping I don't regret this decision, trusting the AI here, which isn't always a good idea, but I really love scaling difficulty after the last few runs, so I am going to be keeping that. Everything else is as it should be. Oh, except for, for some reason, primitive civilizations are at max. There we go, back to normal. Let's not cheat, because we really love primitive civil civilizations as a necrophage. Probably would be a, a little bit unfair there. Stumbling over every word. Let's go with a spiral galaxy, because I just want something different. And... We are... off. Ooh, new art. Cool. And so, we begin very close to the core of the galaxy. So the very first new thing then to showcase almost instantly is this. You can see the UI has changed drastically for the planets themselves, and we now have a brand new district type. We have the Industrial District, giving us artisans and metallurgists, essentially allowing our normal districts to now produce alloys and consumer goods. However, they have changed the actual buildings themselves, so the alloy foundries and the civilian industries can no longer be built more than one per planet, and I believe as you upgrade them, they simply add more to the districts themselves, uh, giving more jobs per district or something similar, rather than improving the building's normal output. Again, we'll get a lot of this stuff wrong, we'll find out together as we continue. The next thing I want to quickly touch on is just the fact that the population growth has now changed as well. Not only are you affected by all the normal modifiers, there we have rapid breeders, xenophobe, etc. But also we have population growth 3.0 plus 2.51 from pops. So this is the number of populations on the planet will actually affect how fast new populations are grown, which makes complete sense. More people means more people making more people. So with that all out of the way, let's get into the main thing I really want to do as fast as possible. What I really want is temples. Temples will give us the lovely thing known as unity. There we are. Eight unity, five society research, ten amenities. It's also going to have a very happy world. And this is because the, the ascension perk become the crisis. So with this, we need to have at least two other ascension perks already unlocked, and as soon as we get this, this tab down here will unlock, and then we can start contributing to our menace, and then eventually unlock some really, really powerful stuff, and honestly, end the galaxy. That is our goal. We are a spiteful and horrible lot, and maybe it's going to bring happiness to everyone. The Shroud is a very pretty place, and bringing it into the material realm can only bring happiness and joy. You know what? Yeah, we're doing them a favour. So, we're going to need lots of unity, thus lots of temples. Building slots also are no longer affected by number of population. They're now affected by your planetary administration and your city districts. Once you build a city district, you'll get one extra building slot open. Our recent encounter with alien lifeforms, just over here on the desert world, has reignited and made suddenly more urgent the old debate on how we should approach contacting any potentially intelligent alien civilizations we may meet. While some advocate taking hostile preemptive action against them, others advise caution, pointing out that it would be wise to learn more about the aliens' capabilities before we risk antagonizing them. Yeah, so we can't do this one because, you know, we are... Xenophobes. It'd be wise to be cautious, or we must ward off those who would threaten us. So with this one, we cannot attack neutral entities, other nations will find it harder to establish communications with us, negative first contact events are less likely to happen, whereas this one, we can attack neutral entities and enables hostile first contact options, such as abduction and dissection. Whoops, I slipped! Well, it looks like we're gonna have to dissect the alien to make sure we know them. You know, we get to know them inside and out. 
I love my job. Okay, we found our first primitive civilization. Because we are the beautiful necrophages, it means that our, our first two guaranteed habitable worlds are instead guaranteed um, primitive civilizations. So the question is, do we go ahead and grab the abduction ascension perk and simply abduct them, or do we just land? I'm actually tempted to do the landing option now. There's an argument for both sides of this, and most people seem to believe that the raiding option is the better, and I actually am in that party at the moment. But I don't want to spend my alloys and resources on enough ships to make that quick, because it it's very slow with only three of our ships. The problem with landing on the planet, though, is it takes a very long time for you to stop having stellar culture shock, and you can't move them until then. Although, as we'll see later, the resettling is been drastically nerfed, because now your populations can actually just move to other planets if there's not enough jobs and everything else on your planet. It's automated, which I love so, so much, but because of that, it now costs energy and influence to move populations. It's very expensive. So what I think I'm going to do is land on the planet, so let's get ready some ground forces, and I am going to purge them and turn them into us straight away. So I'm just going to use the Necrophage Purge option, because we are xenophobes, we'll have this, and just convert all of them at once. No need for the temple to convert them over time. It'll just be us straight away, and then we'll grow humans over there who will start doing the menial labor, since our lovely Letharians really, really don't like doing manual labor. Well, yeah, there we go. Minus 10% worker pop output. They need to be specialists and above. They really do. Going to invest quite a bit in science ships. We really do want to find other empires as soon as we can. Our ground forces are about to land. There should be a very quick fight. There we go. And we now have this world. Ooh, we even have some pre-sapience on. That's interesting for later. Ooh, and they have a lovely um, primitive ability there. Earthbound, game giving plus 10% energy credits. Might not completely destroy them straight away. Okay, but now purge type is necrophage, so straight away, undesirables. They will all be converted into our superior form. Oh yeah, speaking of which... Humans, yeah, you're currently owned populations. Is that a problem? Uh, no, we have enough of the Lathir that you may as well just keep that. Yeah, just keep being there. That's fine. May have to change that later, but not yet. Okay, so a temple. We're going to build a admin office here, and then that's probably going to be it for now. Yeah, as soon as one of you goes, you'll be converted. Why are none of the humans growing here? They don't have migration. Oh, it's not because they're own pops, are they? They should really be migrating automatically. Do I need to move one? Well, definitely speed things along. So there we go. There's now a human here. So in a second, we should have a growth. There we go. Some homegrown humans. Ooh, yes. Let's try and get some mechs as soon as possible as well. Although we are spiritualist, I am definitely going to be using robots. Anything to acquire more stuff. Oh, we have a nasty thing over here. Ah, but it will allow us now to showcase the new way of investigating an alien species. So before, normally you'd get the, the situation log events, and then you'd have to pay site of research. But now, you just send one of your envoys. The daughter of Tig, for instance. So this is very similar to the archaeology sites, except for it's a fair bit faster. You'll have events and choices sometimes, especially with other empires. I'll cover it more in detail with the other empires because we're going to be a bit <laughs> interesting with that one. But now, I just really prefer this system. It's a lot smoother than having to spend everything on it. That's two more insights. Feel free to pause and read this if you wish. Okay, there's the next primitive civilization. We've now made contact with these fellows, so as usual, they're just the uh, marauders. Once again, I will read and go into way more detail with some of the others. Okay, what I think I need to do, though, is start sending some science vessels as true scout ships. I am just surveying everything at the moment because I wanted to find all the primitives and everything, but now, can you just try and get over there? And I'll just keep on sending you to explore until we find another empire. Wow, we got lucky. 
Wait, seriously? That wasn't even one of our guaranteed ones. And we found the alien logs as well. Okay, uh, I'm very happy with this start, as you can imagine. It said there was an encounter here, but I can't see anything. Ooh, okay. Uh, in that case, I want to actually find the ship, because some of the events don't work unless they're in range, I believe. And you know what? Let's build our very first industrial district. Because I'm going to want alloys to defend myself, and I'm going to want more consumer goods, because I want more temples. A system survey has Lovely. Okay, can you please just stay in the system? Looks like we found our very first other empire. We've made first contact with the mysterious aliens in the Aurim system. For now, we have codenamed them Epsilon Menace, until we can find out more about them. If they possess a language, we should decipher it so that we can assess how much of a threat they pose, and how delicious they will taste. Mistaken identification. It seems our linguists have suffered a major setback in their attempts at codifying the language used by the Epsilon Menace. Unfortunately, what they had taken to be their language quite simply was not a language. In her report, Envoy Mubi, daughter of Fura, states that after days of investigating the matter from every angle, the linguist finally concluded that it was in fact probably an attempt at music. <laughs> That's minus two insights. A system the casual insult thrown in there as well. Okay, well, we're definitely going to want to survey all this area. Since we want to block them off. We're not going to be friendly with them, as you can imagine. I was saying at the start we might not be openly hostile straight away, but that's not necessarily true, because we are going to be trying to cut them apart. Potentially. Maybe. We've had another encounter, this time by the looks of things just the space whales. I'll send my other envoy over to deal with that. We all know what the space whales are. Nothing really too much of interest. Spacefaring civilization discovered. It has quickly become apparent that the so-called Epsilon Menace are in fact part of a major spacefaring civilization. Our probes in the system have detected starships flitting between the system's second planet and Alpine planet, which our scans show is supporting a considerable population, and various space stations across the system. We have been able to intercept considerable volumes of communication traffic, but so far accurate translations have proven elusive. Let's nab some of them for closer inspection. Aliens captured. A brave team of covert special forces has escaped Epsilon Menace territory with hostages captured from one of their colonies in the system. They were able to land on a remote part of the planet in the cover of darkness and see several live aliens, as well as a large stash of technical hardware that is sure to help us decode their language and assess their technological level. Though the operation went without a hitch and our operatives were able to escape without pursuit, it is probably too much to hope that the Epsilon Menace remains ignorant of our actions. Interrogate, or let the vivisection commence. We will likely find out more from this approach, but the Epsilon Menace will be extremely displeased when they find out. But it's for science. Oh, yep, they are instantly hostile to us. Are we gonna escape? Maybe I didn't actually need to be in the system. Maybe I could have been in the system nearby. Oh, please escape. Okay, they didn't die at least. They managed to um, get out in time. And we have one more of the primitive worlds now under our control, which we're going to do the same as before. Simply devour them. Oh, I've just thought of something. It's too late to change it now. In the menace system, assimilating or purging populations will give you menace points if you've unlocked... The Crisis Ascension. Oh, I should have done that earlier. Also, we're going to go with One Vision first, since we want more unity, and of course we are all unified in this pursuit. What a shame. I think we just need more raw resources, honestly, at the moment. We are really, really lacking. Make sure to grab this system and uh, that system there. Then we can pretty much guarantee that it can't get through. Although... No, I don't think I'll get this one. I'll be a bit too greedy. 
we'll just keep on trying to expand as best we can. So next I'm actually going to grab Harmony. The reason is I really want Unity of Self. Necrophaging populations give Unity, which we're going to do later. And I also want the extra stability and everything else. Though we could go potentially with Discovery and really rush some tech. Since tech will help us with our spying efforts, giving us extra encoding and extra um, code breaking. Uh... They're saying that Dominion is great because it increases the output of our humans. No, domin um, Domination, because we also want the extra unity, so there's lots of things there we really, really want. Hey, end of our homeworld. We're about to convert some humans into Lathir. <laughs> okay, um, alien study complete. We have concluded our study on the Epsilon Menace aliens we recently captured. The hostages proved unwilling to cooperate with us, but this became a moot point as we begun to cut them open. We now know much about the internal functions of their gizzards, ears, claws, and other body parts, giving our genetics researchers valuable xenobiological data. Driven to terror by the cruelty of our actions, a handful of aliens... And my screen just turned off. That's a great time. You know what? I'm leaving this in. Aha! Who we now know to be the Figyari? I'm going to call them Bob. Cooperated with us as we sought to translate their language and access their computer systems. As a result, we now have a considerable intelligence we are able to deploy against them, should the need arise. A most satisfying conclusion. Plus 20 influence ends the first contact procedure with the... Serene Figyar Alliance. Research option gained, hydroponics farming, ooh, lovely. And plus 50% towards that. And our knowledge of their internal organs will be of use du during espionage operations. Intel is set to 35, so we need to know a little bit about them. We wish you no harm, Lathir, but I know that we do not look kindly upon our kind being subjugated to unspeakable atrocities on your operating tables. You have already earned our eternal displeasure. Do not push us further. So we can't do the first one here. Oh, we should actually make them like us a bit more. See, I do love this, the fact that these now actually have a point. Whereas before, it was no matter what you said at the start, it didn't really matter. Now it does. Uh, so there's this one, which is minus 33% spy network growth on us. Or we can go with this one, which is the one I'm going to go with, which will give us plus 33% growth on them. Though they won't like us much for it, which we don't particularly care about. So, uh, one thing you'll notice is that I don't instantly see their borders anymore, because I don't have the intel. Well, I see some of them because they're close to us, but I have no idea what's going on over here at all. And it's because we simply wouldn't know that. Our sensors don't reach there, and we don't have any intel. Of course, we can fix that through our spy network. Oh! We just have internal organs over here. As you can see, this is the first time this has actually worked for me in the test run, which was only an, about an hour of playthrough, just to make sure I got the very basics down. I actually failed that, and their ship escaped. That's why I was so keen to have the ship close by. I didn't get that. That's just a... I think that's a brain on a plate. Okay, uh, let's send in... One of our fellows. So now, as you can see, that's leveling up. Spy network established. We have received our first clandestine report from Spy Master Mubi, daughter of Fura, inside the Serene Figyar Alliance. This marks the foundation of our first spy network within a Xeno Empire, ideally positioned to warn us of their alien and duplicitous schemes. Instantly, they close borders with us. We are obviously very sad about this. So sad. So we have all different options here. I think there's actually a few more which we'll unlock later. Things like gathering information, preparing sleeper cells, which just allows us to move away without all this going down. Acquiring assets. This can be defectors on their side, or just traitors and all that other good stuff. Basically said the same thing there. Um, extort favors, so we can get favors from them, even if they hate us. Steal their technology. Sabotage star bases, basically blowing up things. And arm privateers. Making privateers appear within their space. Now, doing these things will also give us menace points once we have everything unlocked. So, as you can see here, we have the infiltration level, and that will affect how much intel we have. Essentially, it's the minimum we can have is our infiltration once it's above a certain amount, and this will allow us to see things. Right now, I have no idea how much fleet power they have, for instance, and I don't know why they hate us. I really don't know. I couldn't hazard a guess why they don't like us. Could be anything, honestly. 
as the necrophage goes off there. Okay, so I need to move over here as fast as possible so that I can block them off. Um, what would be the best way of doing this? Yeah, I think I should try to be greedy and grabbing this system would be the best way. So that system and that system, that way we only need two bastions. And that will completely block them off from our territory. An alien society wishes to contact us. And we just found the space whales. As mentioned before. Okay, that will become more stable as time goes on. And we're making the necrophage pops. Oh, we need more jobs. Yeah, we just need more resources. So I think just basic jobs is probably what we want here. Not anything else. We need minerals, we need food, we need energy. We just need everything. We have our first factions, so we have the Unity Party, which are the Xenophobes. Uh, we're probably going to do all that as it goes. <laughs> Invasive Xeno studies, you have no idea. And then we have the Militarist, which currently is just upset about everything. Could we just make you a rival already? I mean, we're not going to like each other, let's be real, so... Sure, harm relations and closed borders, don't know why they're open, honestly. I have went blind. There we go. <laughs> I'm completely blind then. Ooh. Why? Why is that going bad? Oh, just the intel fell. I'm assuming that's because of the closed borders. Yeah, I'm assuming closed borders affects your intel. So that's fine. That will go back up later uh, once we have more of this. Oh, that's something I didn't even consider. I mean, it makes complete sense. If that is what just happened. Our economy will definitely bounce back quite a bit once all of these worlds stop having stellar culture shock. Because right now we're getting minus 33% resources from jobs and then minus stability, which is further decreasing resources from jobs. So these two worlds are practically worthless. That is definitely one of the reasons why going for the raiding can be definitely better early on, since you can avoid that by simply getting all the populations onto your home world and then dealing with them. Doesn't help as well that the Lathir don't like being workers and produce less resources, so they're not actually giving us much anyway. Okay, looks like this bit opens up, which is good, because I think we're about to hit a dead end over here. Right? No, no, never mind. I thought it was a dead end. It isn't fantastic. Oh, hurry up and grab these worlds, please. I think they're expanding over there. I saw the border kind of shift. Can we see the home world by any chance? No, we can't. I'm hoping we can soon, because once we can, I can put down a criminal enterprise. And that will give us a lot of energy. So this time I won't be devouring all these straight away, because they live on a frost world, which I can't really inhabit. In fact, I may just make them residents. Turn on population, sorry, migration controls, make them residents. You know what, sure. Let's give them slightly better rights and everything else, so they can do all their jobs. And that way we can start using this world straight away. Again, we won't get too many resources from this purely because minus 33% less stability. But we'll get something at least. Well, our greed has apparently paid off. I'm now building the next star base over here. I mean, I haven't been able to grab either of these worlds because all of my resources went into this. But this should put us in a good position to not instantly be killed by them. Maybe. So one thing I've noticed as well... Oh, I just finished the tech. So one thing I noticed when I was getting the tech is this. Minerals from Starbase Constructions, plus 20%. It seems like they are pushing for more resources from space. Does this count as the stations as well, or is it just the star bases? In which case, I need to find a... Wait, what does give you minerals in space? Is it the nebula? It's the nebula, right? So if we try and shift over to this direction... Not sure. I'm not sure if I'm actually hitting the mark there. I might be a bit wrong, but it does seem like a lot of stuff which normally wasn't giving stuff from space now is. So either they've just buffed it a little bit or they're trying to push it a bit more. Don't know. We'll find out as we go. So we want more alloys. More alloys would start to allow us to defend ourselves. But we also need more of everything else. So what I think I'll do is temple and I'll also build a industrial district here as well. Construction completed. That's not giving as much crime as I'd hoped, but that's fine. Hopefully soon they'll upgrade their building so I can add a second building as well. 
Eh, still gonna have 16 energy a month. It's gonna take a while to get our return back on that. I'm now remembering that the Criminal Syndicate isn't the most powerful thing, but I still wanted it for the plus 20% here anyway, so I don't really mind too much. Ooh, look, we have loads more options. Let's try and acquire an asset. Can we send the organs? The organs make it better! <laughs> of course they do. Skill bonus of four. Why? Why are the organs good here? Let's have a look see. So the organs are good at subterfuge and manipulation. Acquire asset asset is manipulation. Okay. So this is just subterfuge. I can't say anything. My all my words just blended them. Uh, this one's manipulation and diplomacy, subterfuge and government, and government diplomacy and manipulation, technology. So the assets will hopefully be some traitors who will be good at some of the other options. So really what I want is a technology one, since I really want to steal their tech, since we're going to be quite behind on that. So, yep, let's send in the organs. And we need 900 energy, so... Uh, you know, I really want to do this right now before the end of the episode, so let's send in some organs! Construction venture completed. So there it goes. Construction. Mobilizing operatives. Our deep cover operatives have stepped up their surveillance on potential targets. Narrowing the field. A short list of targets has been drawn up. These operatives, who are no longer tasked with surveillance, will provide cover for the others. So doing this will also knock down our infiltration level, which is a shame since we'll lose some of our intel for a while, but having all these extra operatives will be very very good for us. I also think what we should do is just throw down a few corvettes just so we can defend ourselves a little bit better. Construction our minerals are now being produced a lot faster since at least one of our worlds is no longer in stellar culture shock as well which is great. The spy master recently launched a quiet investigation into her own operatives within the Alliance. After noticing a recent drop in their performance, she's discovered these operatives skimming from the resources allocated to intelligence gathering and bribes. These goods and currencies are being reinvested elsewhere in business concerns, earning the operatives a comfortable profit at our expense. As a result, their attention and loyalties have clearly become divided. Progress has been put on hold for the moment until the spy master can reassert operational efficiency. This cannot be tolerated, dispose of these operatives, which will lower our infiltration, or get plus 1% trade value? I'm guessing this is because we're a, um, a megacorp, but saying that, we don't actually have the option. Well, the little icon to say that, so I'm just going to go with the plus 1% trade value. It's not much, but sure. As long as this is still moving along, Ooh, which it is. As the operation nears its conclusion, the Spy Master has moved to secure our new asset within the Alliance. Our remaining operatives are poised to facilitate any cover she may need. Now, the Spy Master reports from the Alliance a successful execution so far. We have won the loyalty of a rebel whose desire for disruptive change may easily be moulded to suit our goals as well. Fantastic. Let's have a quick look at our new operative. There we are. Ooh, they want to go with the Sabotage Starbase, definitely. Ah, it's military as well, so only one of the two, but still. So this is a hacker. Okay. I might do that again, see what else we can get, because you can get all sorts of combos. And because we have them as well, we get a plus five to our maximum infiltration level. You know what? Yeah, I'm just going to try and grab a second one as well. For now, we're just stacking all this up for when we have the crisis all operational so we can start earning points towards that. Then we can be a lot more hostile with it. Well, this is where I'm going to be calling the episode for now. So we have found our first empire, we're about to find a second empire. We have set up our spy network, our very first one, and we already have been using their organs to win the loyalty of their rebels. It's a very weird thing, admittedly, but it is seemingly working. You know what? Let's start this one as well, so I don't forget. There we go. 
And with that concludes the first episode. So, if you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff, helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Solaris is a series you wish to see continued in the future. In the next episode, we are definitely going to be able to unlock the Become the Crisis Ascension perk. This will allow us to start earning menace points for doing all sorts of naughty things within the galaxy, which will finally let us become the crisis we always knew we could be. If you put your heart and soul into things, of course you can end the galaxy. Also, it kind of looks like our empire is becoming Britain, which is very interesting. Weird shape. Thank you for watching, have a lovely day, do take care, and until next time, goodbye. Now I'm finally off to get some sleep, because apparently I always need to record at 2am for some reason.